Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Bowls. In relation to the deformed clutch and my vanilla scream clown project, I had a great question in the comments section which prompted me to do this video. The question was, where does that leave us in terms of the vanilla scream clown project? We wouldn't want to repeat this pairing. If it is a genetic defect, we wouldn't want to repeat that. So this video is going to outline the whole project. I'm going to show you several generations of snakes. I'm going to show you what was paired to what to get to where we are today. And I'll tell you for each of those snakes what percentage of DNA is shared with the other snakes in the project. In particular, the original female that's been used at the start of the project to produce many of the babies that you're going to see. Okay, so this is one of the earliest snakes that I acquired from ARP and she is a pastel vanilla clown, a really nice one. This was the mother of this deformed clutch. This is the clutch here. Uh, these are the survivors and they're all going into shed but I haven't been able to bring myself to euthanise these guys yet. They all have severe shark jaw. And she is actually where the project started. So this is uh, actually her first deformed clutch. She's given me clutches every year for the last six or seven seasons and this is the first time I've had an issue. I actually tried for a vanilla cream clown or a vanilla scream clown with her first pairing and I paired her to this male who is a fire clown. So only the genes that I actually wanted, nothing extra in this pairing my first attempt at a vanilla scream clown so there she is um, this girl is called Moana uh, at a time when I used to name my snakes and this guy here is Rambo so pastel vanilla clown times fire clown and we did not get a vanilla scream clown but what we did get and this is her daughter is a really nice pastel vanilla clown so this is a chip off the old block this is daughter she shares 50 percent of her dna with mum and she is one of the candidates for pairing to have another go at a vanilla scream clown but as i say she does share 50 percent of her dna with mum so this is second generation and this is also a pastel vanilla clown. Now this is dad for that deformed clutch and he is actually going into shed and this is a firefly enchi clown and he is not actually related to her. Uh, he shares none of his DNA with her and I'll show you the two snakes that made this guy. This is his mother this is a pastel Enchi clown, a really nice high quality female and she has made quite a few clutches for me but is not directly involved in the vanilla scream clown project. So this is pastel Enchi clown and she was paired to the same fire clown male Rambo to produce this guy. So Rambo has already been paired to Moana and all the babies were fine. Okay, so this is Rambo, this is the dad. So the female is not related, but these two guys here, the pastel vanilla clown female that I just showed you, and the firefly Enchi clown here, share the same father. This snake has not been bred yet. This snake has, and again, third generation now, third generation pastel vanilla clown. And this is actually completely unrelated to any of those snakes. I used a completely different pairing to produce this snake. So this pastel vanilla clown shares no DNA with any of the snakes that I just showed you. Let me show you what the pairing was for this snake. Okay, so this is mum, vanilla clown female. So this vanilla clown female was paired to this male who is a pastel yellow belly spot nose het for clown male and the idea here was to progress my spot nose clown project 
but a byproduct of this pairing was this third generation pastel vanilla clown which is in the vanilla screen clown project she is therefore not related to any of the other snakes or is she this female is not related in any way to the clutch that we just hatched out which was deformed however this male does have a relationship guess what this male this is his mother the original pastel vanilla clown so, so he shares 50 percent of his dna with this female the offspring produced from this spot nose clown and i did get some perfectly developed spot nose clowns out of this pairing they share 25 percent of their dna with the original mother so you can see as we start to build the project how we are incorporating some familial dna or some family genetics into a lot of the offspring even though they're not directly related and might be second and third generation they are actually still however loosely related to each other so this guy here is this fella's dad and he is exactly the same morph he is a pastel yellow belly spot nose but he is not het for clown and he was paired to that original pastel vanilla clown female to produce this guy so again although father is not related this snake here does carry some of the genetics from the original mother so this guy has been used in my spot nose clown project but not in the vanilla cl vanilla scream clown project 25 percent of the dna in this guy would be common with the clutch that i just hatched out so back to the vanilla scream clown project last year i did produce this female and she is a super vanilla enchi clown she is an obvious candidate for progressing the project and she is not related in any way to the original pairings she is not related to the offspring that are deformed let me show you the pairing that made this girl again it's that vanilla clown female and she was paired to this guy a totally unrelated male and this is a pastel enchi vanilla het clown so he is the dad for this super vanilla there is vanilla on both sides of that pairing neither of the snakes are related in any way to the deformed clutch but this female underneath here the super vanilla is going to be very useful in the future and of course this year guys i have actually made a super scream clown so i already have a vanilla scream this is super pastel more than likely and this was produced this year and as you can see she's perfectly fine so i have actually achieved my goal but this is a super scream and i wanted just a vanilla scream or a vanilla cream clown so this is actually more than i wanted from the pairing a magnificent snake and again as you build these projects you are incorporating some familial dna let me show you the pairing that produced this snake and of course this is dad the firefly enchi that sired the deformed clutch that we've been talking about he is the father for this little girl here and she is perfectly okay so same father as the deformed clutch and this is the female that i used with that male and this is a super pastel vanilla het for clown female and guess what her mum is the original pastel vanilla clown female that produced the deformed clutch so this girl shares 50 percent of her dna with mum so this girl her mother is actually the original pastel vanilla clown female that we started the project with so again 
this girl shares 50% of her DNA with the original mother. The father, the Firefly Enchi clown, is completely non-related to the mother, so shares none of his DNA with her. So this baby here shares 25% of its DNA with the original pastel vanilla clown female. So we've reached our goal. The snake is perfectly formed, but it shares 25% of its DNA with the original mum. So as we built the project, inevitably, we have snakes which share some common DNA, and we have snakes which are completely non-related, which we could also use. And this massive girl here is a pastel vanilla yellow belly spot nose het for clown female. She is actually the sister of the snake I used to produce the super scream clown that you've just seen. So yes, this snake here is the daughter of the original pastel vanilla clown female. She shares 50% of her DNA with that female. This female has not been used for the Vanilla Scream Clown project. She's been used in a completely separate project, uh, my Spot Nose Clown project, and has been paired to unrelated males and has given clutches which have been absolutely perfect. But again, an indication that with time, as you build projects, you are accumulating snakes which are loosely related to the original female and they do share some common DNA. We would typically call that inbreeding. Okay guys, so let's continue that discussion about shared DNA and the potential for genetic defects being transferred to offspring, where you can see that it's obvious we are accumulating in some of the snakes shared DNA. And we do need to be cautious it hasn't been an issue up to now, but will be an issue in future pairings. We need to be cognizant of how much common DNA there is in the snakes that we're pairing. If possible, we do not want to pair related snakes with any shared DNA, just in case. Most of the time we get away with it, and a lot of lime breeding has a lot of common DNA. And ball pythons are particularly resilient and show very little ill effects from that inbreeding. But we have had a clutch that was all shark jaw, and that is a warning. It's a wake up call, and it tells me that I need to be careful moving forward in this project. We do have a large number of snakes that I've held back, and a lot of them could be paired quite safely. I can mix and match between offspring from various clutches and pick the ones that are not related and still progress the project. I think it's something that we all should be aware of and something that we should all do as routine. When you're working a project, be aware of how much common DNA you're accumulating in your holdbacks and be cognizant of that when you decide what to pair them with. So drop down into the comments guys, let's continue that discussion and I will have another video coming up that looks at some cellular level genetics which may be responsible for some of these defects. And also we're gonna take a look at co-dominant versus incomplete dominant. Very common in the ball python industry to hear people talk about codoms, and actually that is incorrect and I'm going to explain why. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe as usual. More to come. We'll see you next time.